Welcome to the Eclipse demo. Begin by logging in using the user ID and password you used for the old Eclipse. In some instances, if your password was below seven characters, it may not have been brought over to the new system properly, so you'll need to reset your password. Go out and log out for a second and show you that. If you click on this item right here, you're able to get an email to reset your password very easily. You can do that at any time if you forget your password or have any trouble logging in. This is the new desktop for our Eclipse online platform. We've added a lot of features and hopefully made it easier for you to navigate. The first section I'm going to show you is the fast track. This is where you could do a quick document search if you know the document number you're looking for. For example, you can start typing in M100 and the document will come up right away for you. There's also a quick link function where you can do a quick link to your most uh, frequently accessed document and it will keep track of the last document you accessed. In this case, it's the same thing. We have a quick recorded demo here. We'll be updating that this week with some new features that um, you'll be seeing in today's webinar. The My Library section right over here lists each category of documents as well as the full listing of CLSI publications. If we go into the full list, you can see that they're arranged by publication date first, the most recently published documents being on top. You can quickly sort that by document number by clicking this link up here. On the right, you have nice quick links to the categories. And a new feature, you have um, keyword links here where you can link in directly to documents that have a specific keyword. Really nice features that help make it very easy to navigate the new publications. This little button right here gives you a really quick preview of the table of contents and abstract so that you can drill down to get more information about what you're looking at. You can also jump right in to see the page by page view or the PDF view right within this window. So this will bring you straight into the full document. A couple other important things on the home screen. One is the full text search up here. You can see that you can toggle between document number search or text search. And you also have the ability to decide whether you're searching just the title of a document, the title and abstract, or the full text. Some quick tips about searching down here. For example, we could search the full text for the word loves. We'll quickly jump into a list of 55 documents that have the word gloves within them. And we could easily open them up. We have both regular documents here. You can see they're indicated by the word PDF. Or we have our new HTML documents. We're in the process of converting all of our documents to this new view that allows you to select text from within the item. You can collapse the document. Basically, it puts it into the full um, into a table of content style view where you can see all of the chapters listed out. You can expand the sections. You can actually copy text directly from here. You can export it to Word. You can share it uh, by highlighting it. You can actually use some of these nice features we have on the top to add bookmarks to specific sections or um, compile sections together into uh, a single document. So we could use the word, the phrase specimen collection and find all the document sections that address specimen collection and compile them into a custom document. And in a minute, I'll show you an example of a, cu a custom collection that we started. In the My Cloud section, you have your annotation features here. So we can see the comments we added previously to a few documents. This is a great enhancement that really allows some more interaction with the material. So you can see we added comments to document QMS02 and QMS01. Uh, the, talk, the comments can actually be shared with other people in your organization. If you are an administrator, um, you have the choice of sharing them or keeping them for your own personal use. There's also the custom collection section right here. 
where we grouped three sections from two different documents together in our QMS document collection. When you jump into one of those comments, it appears at the top of the page. Now to the next page. And if I wanted to add a comment on here as well, I could use the feature up here to insert the comment. I'm logged in as an administrator, so I have this button here that allows me to share my comment with other people in my organization. You can also, at any time when you're looking at a document, see related documents. So you can see CLSI documents referenced by this document, and you can also see things that reference QMS01. There's also a nice link up here to keywords and the QMS category that the document is contained in. There's also the offline view. This allows me to search the document text offline, as well as save it for use when I'm not connected to the internet. The POCT17, if this was the document I wanted to view, I could simply lock it to my computer and download for offline use. Just takes a second to download. Um, and then you're able to view it. This is actually our white paper, so it looks a little bit different than our regular documents. Up here, there's a search box, so you can page through the results just like using a regular PDF. Uh, this is how you print a document. We're going to go back to the page by page view. So this is the format of our current documents in the library. It looks just like a PDF you may download or a print document that you would purchase. However, we are currently upgrading documents to the HTML view that you saw earlier with uh, the M100. Within the next two weeks, you'll see more of our library converted to this HTML view that allows you to do more interaction with the text, copy and pasting, searching um, and highlighting terms directly within the document, and um, you'll still be able to use that page by page view if you prefer, but it really eliminates the need to use the offline viewer for many users and uh, is, a, is a much more interactive method of working in within our documents. The conversion of three categories is already underway and we should be, you should see documents published in the system within the next two weeks. The QMS method evaluation and micro categories will be the first converted. In the bottom corner right here, you have a bulletin board where CLSI can post messages and your system administrator can also post messages. So we have two messages up here. There is a message linking users to CLSI documents for public review. These are documents that can be reviewed and commented on as we develop them. There's also corrections notices when we make small corrections to documents, if there's any information that comes to light after publication that needs to be updated within it. Those are listed again on our, our website and you can link directly to them using this link here. There's also um, a listing of newly published documents listed in here and you can use the X to remove any notifications you no longer want to see. Okay, at this time I'll take any questions if there is any other features you'd like to see or questions you have about your current use. Uh, one question we have received is about managing users. There's no longer a separate website for administrators to manage their users. It's all done within Eclipse now. As an administrator, you have a couple extra features that you didn't see when I was logged in earlier as Jessica. You now have send message, which would, as an administrator, post a message to just your users and manage users. So it really streamlines the process by not having to go to another URL. Adding users is really easy. You can see this account has a number of users. Active indicates that they're currently logged in. So you can see I'm logged in and so is Debbie. Inactive means just that they are not logged in and it does tell you the last time they were in there. Adding a user is just as simple as clicking the add user button typing in the red field, so first name, last name. User ID, we suggested the email address to keep it very simple. So 
so you would enter the email address in both locations. Enter a password and select a role. The default role is standard user. That should be all you need to do and you will be able to add administrators later on. For now, you'll need to contact CLSI if you need any additional administrators added, but we're happy to do that for you. We are asking that all users of Eclipse log in with a unique user ID and password rather than a generic user ID. If you have a list of users you need us to upload, we're happy to do that in a mass update for you if you just send us their first name, last name, and email address. Usage stats is another area that as an administrator you may want to take advantage of. This allows you to view information about your use, but also your, all of your users' use. So you can see use by all users this year or for a specific date range. So you can see what documents they're using and, um, how, and how often. I have a couple of more questions that have come in from users. One is, can the site administrator post a bulletin to the for the site for all staff to see? And that is correct, yes. Using the send message bu button right here, an administrator can send a message to all users. So you can send it to just a specific user or all users within your organization. You can send it as an email or a bulletin on the bulletin board or both. All right, looks like that's all our questions for today. Thank you all for joining us. And we will be posting recorded versions of today's webinar and the specific sections like administrator use and the offline viewer separately in the help section within the next few days. Thanks again and have a good day.